Good morning. Just thought I'd make a wicking barrel mark too. Click. I went to my mother's yesterday and wicked up two barrels for her for rhubarb and lettuce. And I came up with a bit, what I think is a better idea for the reservoir system in the bottom. It uses less sand and there's more open volume for the water to um, reside in at the base of the barrel. So I thought I'd make up a bit of a clip and show you how I did it. The barrel I'm renovating is this one here. It's one of the gooseberry barrels. I pulled out this gooseberry, or the gooseberry that was in here yesterday, and potted it into a pot for some visitors, and I'll be taking that home with them today when they pick up their child. Right, well, I've just made up the new reservoir system. Here's a picture of the old system. And that was just buried under the sand. And this is the new one. It's looped around into a circle, into a donut has a hole drilled in it with a hole saw or you could cut it out with a knife I used a hole saw and then just join together with zip ties you could also use this sort of hay baling twine to tie it together um, I've just chosen zip ties because it was nice and quick and I bought them in bulk a while back so that's just in there and then on top of that I am going to place this weed cloth so that'll just stop any um, sand or tiny bits of gravel getting into these small slots in here that the water will leak out of. So right, that's that's it in place. Um, fairly level that way, and fairly level that way. So I could come up a bit on this side, but I don't think I really worry about that. Um, now what we're going to do is just basically cover it with sand. So I'll just grab my bucket of sand from over here, just like to. Move, please, the anchor. Test. <laughs> there we go. So. Right, I've just filled it up with water and I gave it a bit of a spray around the outside because we found at Mum's yesterday when I made hers the sand around the outside had to settle around the curve of the pipe. Um, what can I say? I've just made this one too good. Um, no, this, this one's a tighter fit so there's not so much of a gap between the, the um, reservoir hose or donut and the sides walls of the barrel so it's a nice snug fit. Just thought I'd mention this, this sugarcane mulch, um, I've just wet it down to stop the dust. It's sitting on top of the sand. I've seen other people use shade cloths, and I might have mentioned this in other places on the blog and in the other uh, wicking barrel clips. Um, I actually like to use a sugarcane mulch. It's a lot cheaper than buying shade cloth and putting it down there. With shade cloth, I, I would think you'd have problems with the roots growing through it into the sand, like I showed you before. You empty out the barrel to put a new crop in there or to revitalise the soil. Next thing you know, you pulled out the shade crop and it's made a bit of a mess. This sugarcane mulch actually will compress down into a fine black organic layer. Um, I did another clip, I don't know whether I put it up on YouTube or for something else. And um, it becomes a sandwich layer that you can actually pull up in large chunks and leaves nice pristine, pristine leaves nice clean sand underneath so just makes it easier when you're renovating a barrel or emptying the soil or doing whatever maintenance to get that um, separation layer so you don't lose any of your sand with your soil or vice versa so just so I mention that right just doing the soil mix now for the tomato barrel in it I'm using reclaimed soil from the soil pile over there coconut coir that's rehydrating in some sea soil and fish emulsion um, some um, and that'll just go through this screen straight into the reclaimed soil and in this reclaimed soil I've also got these little pellets things uh, the safe um, uh, CBM mix which is the cow manure blood and bone rock dust and there's also the end of a bag of worm castings dried out worm castings I found in there so all that will get blended together and I'll show you how I fill up the strawberry barrel, uh, the um, tomato barrel with it and some of it will also go to top up the uh, strawberry wall over there. 
which is getting some more plants put in it. Right, well the beds, the barrel's finished. Um, this is what it looks like. Not much different from any other wicking barrel really, other than the soil level's a bit lower, but I'll get to that in a minute. Um, the cage is secured onto the barrel, the tomato cage, and onto the top of the um, shade house structure. So, yeah, I think it's going to work great. There's going to be all that extra water down the bottom, which means that the plant will survive that little bit longer without um, being watered, because I tend to be a bit of a lazy garden gardener, hence the use of wicking beds and barrels. Um, with the soil, I did add a bit of the sugarcane trash that we've, or mulch that we have laying around the place. That's just some bits that have been um, taken off beds where we've dug through the beds. A bit of excess sugarcane mulch it just lightens up the mixture a bit, a bit more organic matter for the worms to munch on. The reason these guys are planted so low is because I'm using the same method Ray from Praxis and Voodoo Garden Channel um, grows his tomatoes and peppers. So what you do is you grow them in a small, what he does is he grows them in a small cup as seedlings and as they outgrow the cup he puts the cup into a larger pot and then fills up to the top of the leaves, the crown, the crown bits in there. And then as that plant outgrows that pot he'll put it in a larger pot and then again bury it up to almost the top. So every all along that stem a tomato will grow out roots. Peppers will do the same um, as far as I know. I'm fairly sure peppers do. Um, or capsicum, sorry. Chilies. So that's how he that's how he likes to grow his and I'm pretty sold on the idea because anything that sends out more roots um, to soak up more water and more nutrients has got to be great for the plant and only make it healthier and stronger. So that's why it's down lower. So as it grows up, I will put in more soil mix um, that I will be storing because I made too much. So that's what's going on with this barrel at the moment. But other than that, um, with the new donut reservoir, it's the same as any other wicking barrel. There's a reservoir in the bottom. It's just got a larger capacity of water in there now, or the capacity to hold more water because of the void inside the egg pipe. And yeah, it should be a lot better for the plants. So. I've got another one here. This one's done normal wicking style. Um, nothing's planted in there at the moment. I've got some black Russian tomatoes and some um, uh, brandywine pink uh, sown in trays in there. So one of those guys will end up going in this barrel here. Now I'm actually tossing up whether I should empty out the barrel and do the donut reservoir the same as this one over here. Because I really do think that that's going to be the way to go a lot more water in the base so that's pretty much all it as far as the wicking barrels mark two are concerned have a good one